We know there are many choices in internet radio, and the staff and host of LA Talk Live would like to thank you for choosing the internet's hottest destination for the most eclectic sound and invigorating talk. This is LA Talk Live. We are more than just talk. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Joy in My House, inspirational reality show with a touch of recovery. A reality show where nothing is left unsaid. And no one is insignificant who shares. I'm joined here by my co-host and recording artist, Lolita Robinson. How are you doing today? And Van, can you hear me? Welcome okay, to another good. day of Joy in My House. I'm really glad. Happy Super Bowl Sunday. Happy Super Bowl Sunday. Oh, how can you forget that? It's a big, big day for it's football right now. It's a big, right big day. Are you going to go have a party? Uh, my girlfriend's parents are having a Super Bowl party at their house. So wow. She's Way in Lancaster, everything. huh? Way in Lancaster. That's going to be nice. Yeah, they just got back from Florida just yesterday, and already they're already having a party, so oh, it must be nice. Oh, that's going to be fun. Yeah, <laughs> that's going to be fun. Well, I'm just going to enjoy the freeway that it's empty. Because, you know, exactly. I go, but I'm not really into it. But my, my, my little niece is nine, and she asked me to vote for the Broncos. So why she likes the Broncos, I'm going to do it. How about you? <laughs> I'm a, definitely a Broncos fan because okay. I do not like New England. I do not like Tom Brady. Oh. So it's, oh. they beat him. Oh. So I became a Broncos fan. Um, but Tom Brady is an amazing quarterback. He's going to go into the Hall of Fame. His girlfriend is a Victoria's Secret model. So yeah, I, think, I always well, envied him. Okay. Yeah, I can see why. <laughs> yeah, really. But the guy is a good a good player, and I think he's a good husband. So I think it's something that he should be validated for. Is I just, he leaving the game? No, no. He just they didn't make it to the Super Bowl. Okay, okay. So, so he's going into the Hall of Fame. Okay. Yeah, he'll eventually go into the Hall of Fame. He's That's that good. good. How about Van? Van, who, who are you rooting for? His Pittsburgh uh, Steelers. Oh, okay, so you just kind of <laughs> hanging. Well, well, it's a, it, it's a flip of the coin because it would be nice to see the Panthers win because I believe last season they they didn't even make it to the playoffs. Oh, they didn't. Yeah, and, uh, and then uh, of course they're kind of like Peyton, the underdog team. No, they, I don't think I don't think so. No. Okay. But um, with Peyton, um, being that he broke all these football records but has less rings to his younger brother. Uh-oh, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I might have to zip on Yeah, the so, Panthers, you know, yeah. to end his career, to go out with a ring, you know, exactly. would be would okay. be nice, you know, because right. if, you know, if I was in that position, being that I'm, I'm the oldest one on the team, I would like to end my career like okay, that. Okay, well, then so. thank you. Well, then I might have to just kind of change my vote there. Well, well going, you know, uh, beating adversity, I think it's something that even as a faith-based show, we talk about yeah. going through our challenges and struggles. So to see Manning go through such, he broke his neck. Oh. They said he would never play again, came back and played. And now he's in the Super Bowl during uh, the season. He actually got hurt and said he might not even play ever again during the season. Played that game, won the game. That got him oh, to the Super Bowl. What? Beating adversity, I think, is something as Christians we, we aspire to because it's very easy for us in our worldly, in our flesh, to to just give up. Yeah, so. it really is. Well, you, you know, it's really interesting. Last week at the concert, I was talking about the wounded um, soldiers. soldiers. And what I happened to do, I found this uh, website about how they have a training camp for uh, the vets from the military and the NFL players suffer the same type of injuries. Wow. They oh, suffer those I have a lot of respect for football players. I didn't realize that they go through post traumatic stress syndrome. Mm -hmm. They have a whole yes. lot of mental things that they go through and they have to be re re restored back into society the same way as the vets do. So I have a lot of respect for those men who provide their lives and and I don't know what's going to happen with your fighters. But don't forget on. about the women either now. The women. Well, the, well, the women exactly. Yeah. But I was just talking about in terms of you know, yeah, that's true. The women coming back and it just happened to be this guy used to be in the NFL. He has this camp. He didn't mention the women in there, but absolutely, I'm not disregarding our ladies, our ladies who have given their forces. services. Yes. Well, it's interesting because Will Smith has his movie called Concussion. Not Did you see about, it? I have not seen it. It seems profound. It seems okay. like they're really going to touch on some issues regarding how men and uh, how men are treated in the NFL and how the 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 the, 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 what the security. The uh, yeah. What happens afterwards? And it's same for I think most people in general. Right. What happens in a loss of a career? What happens in the loss of a marriage? Exactly. What happens That's in what the I was loss talking of a son or week. child? That's right. It's it's really something that, for me, only God 
could fill that void. That's right. Absolutely. And, 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 it's, and having faith is difficult too. That's not easy either. Well, that's the platform of our show. Like we said, where do you find your joy in the midst of challenges when struggles. you're called off the field? Because most right? of us are not, we're not on the field every day. Everyday life, you have to show up that's right. in the hard places. So, and you're a fighter. I would love to. I don't well, think I, I have, could go um, and see Sam this. Lira. He's he's going to yeah. fight for the Walt the uh, Walter Weight Championship title. Where's Where's the fight going to be? It's going to be at the Citizen Bank Arena in Ontario. Okay. So it's you know it's about. I 5, wish I could go, but there's attendance. no way I could I could hang with that. There's no way. It's pretty gruesome. It's very yeah. intense. Um, I took my son, who's 15, you know, and but he? he's been he's, he's grew up in fights like I did. I've seen from okay. the first UFC. I, I've seen so many fights. People ask me about fights. I was like, I don't need to watch it. I I rather read about it. Now. Right, right. Uh, too, it's too much. It's a lot. It's a lot. And especially when it's one of my fighters. Yeah. Then Ooh, it's it's cool. I, I'm connected. Best of luck to you. Well, you've got a lot of experience in that. So, what did you think about Eric last week? We had a great show for you last week, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. So if you're tuning in, we want to thank you for being a part of the joy that we have here in our house on latalklive.com. Uh, Eric, he's a music ministry leader at Bridges Church, our yeah. home church. You had a great concert with them. It was so nice. Sunday night. Yeah, and that wind was crazy. I, I didn't think anybody would show up. The wind was, it, I think it was the coldest night of the year. It was so cold. <laughs> but people came out, they gave us support, and it was nice having a team. I really am finding out the importance of having teams. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, we all have different gifts. I was the one who was a little bit more seasoned and more professional in that way. But everybody brought something to the table. Everyone's talent contributed. I didn't feel so alone. And, you know, it's like this is a team. Right. I mean, you we and I are a team. Other. You know, you Without were, you, I can't do what you and do what, and vice and versa. And, verse, and then having uh, Van, Van. And, and Richard here. I mean, it is a team. And competition, it doesn't have to be so because we all bring something different to the table. I wish that we would be more supportive of one another except, ex, ex, instead of being competitive and hating. And, you know, Eric touched on that so much yeah. last week. So it was an amazing show to have Eric come back. Yeah. You had an amazing concert. So we want to thank all of our listeners and viewers out there for tuning in with us. Know that you can follow us on Facebook, backslash Join My House. We also have a Twitter account. You can follow us on Twitter.com, backslash Join My House. And you can also follow us on Instagram, backslash Join My House. If you want to watch any of our archive mess, uh, shows, just go to the latalklive.com. You look, click on Shows. Uh, look up Join My House and you can watch all of our archive shows. We also are on YouTube. Just click and Join My House on the LA Talk Live channel. Yeah, yeah. You said you're going to do that soon, right? We're going to have our own channel. We have our own channel. I just haven't posted any of our shows because okay. we're already on the LA Talk Live channel, but we'll start that very soon. But we have a great show for yes, you today. Yes, we do. Julian Keys. He is not only a music producer, singer, songwriter, and dancer. He's also the founder of his entertainment company called In No. You're not going to want to miss. He's been on the show before with a live performance of yeah. his new EP. This is Join My House, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to stay tuned. We're going to come back with Julian Keys. Hey, hey, shout us out. What's the count? I'm your host. I am WDC. Tune in to WDC Radio on LA Talk Live every Saturday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time for sickle cell trade awareness, lupus, bullying, mental health, and all different aspects of life. So tune in to WDC Radio right here on LA Talk Live. Also, you can listen to us on iTunes, Live 365, YouTube, and Ustream. And don't forget Apple TV and Roku right here on LA Talk Live where we're more than just talk. Shout us out. What's the count? Welcome. This is Greg inviting you to tune in Saturday, 6 p.m. to the Mystic Ballroom. All vinyl most of the time, and we'll cover psychedelic, soul, garage, and much, much more. Myself, and the Young Mogul will bring you this every Saturday at 6 p.m. exclusively on latalklive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B, Live 365 Radio, Flag TuneIn Radio, AHA Radio, TV Radio, and Apple TV Radio. Or you can watch and listen directly at latalklive.com. Reality, radio, handcrafted for yours and mine, listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. There is joy in my house. 
Hello, I'm Joel Ramirez. And I'm Lolita Robinson Coppage, and welcome to Joy in My House on LATalkLive.com. Inspirational radio with a touch of recovery. A reality show where nothing is left unsaid and no one is insignificant who says it. Exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio RB or watch us on Ustream TV. Reality Radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live and we are more than just talk. Welcome back ladies and gentlemen to Joy in My House, inspirational reality show with a touch of recovery. I'm joined here by my co-host and author of Shaped by the Master's Hand, Lolita Robinson. Glad to be here. Let's go. And our in-studio guest, Julian Keys. Welcome back to the show. Hi, Thanks for having me. All right. First of all, I want to thank you for coming back on. You were on our 76th episode. You're right. Exactly. And we are at our 156th episode, so it's amazing. It's been a long time, but to it's have good to you see you. Uh, yeah. yeah, I think we were talking about that. I was 19 at the time. Yeah. 19. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the time has passed. But it's really good to have our guests come back mm-hmm. and tell us that they're still in their craft they're still in their passion and god is still working in your life oh yeah because we met at the red carpet at the warner brothers estate for the oscar viewing party for daphna zyman and children united nations right what got you linked up with daphna yeah. and children united nations mm, right because that was a while ago um i think i was dealing with a couple of people who were actually um performing that night i think that's what it was it was performing and then there was a couple of people who were actually um in charge of it directing the event mm-hmm. oh, so I see. um i had i knew a couple of people and i, I got invited invited to it and um yeah i just kept coming like year after year i think three years in a row and um just met people i got to got the opportunity to meet um daphna and um be a part of that that organization uh, for the time being so it was really interesting yeah. that's good really showing is. up that's the power of showing up oh yeah i, I mean i okay. think we we lose sub, some of that substance in the era of online um but you know thank you very much <laughs> it's very important to show up and support and um be present in the physical form you know mm-hmm. as opposed to just you know online so yeah when you say networking is still a part of this business is always it? yeah definitely i mean you can network online too but not the same I yeah exactly yeah. offline is more valuable because i i was talking to someone about this the other day um you know you can read body language you know you can have direct face-to-face conversation right. um and you can feel people more when it's actually in the physical form right. so i think that's very important but the online also gives you range to you know um be present where you probably couldn't you know mm-hmm. if it was in a physical form so Good. Well, very well said Thank you. well it was interesting <laughs> because i was going through some of my archive videos and mm-hmm. saw the interview that i did on the red carpet at the warner brothers estate which i thought was very interesting because that's how right. we actually got linked up and invited you to the show and right. you killed it last time yeah, oh, and you now you have more material but for our viewers and audience out there who are just tuning in with us our new fans of joy in my house mm-hmm. i want them to get to know Julian Keys again. Cool. So let's talk about where did you grow up? I grew up in Chicago. Hey, that's Chicago, right. Illinois. Yeah. There you go. Chicago, yeah. Illinois. Yes. Were you a church going family? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, my grandmother and my grandfather actually got me into church. They were really church going people. Um, my mother and father, you know, they grew up in church, but they didn't really force the issue of me going to church. It was more so my grandmother and okay. my grandfather. And my grandmother, I remember um, I must have been like probably 12, and she did like an in house um, lesson actually teaching me, you know, teaching me this is what this is and this is what this means and I remember from there on out you know I, I became really um attached to my faith and it really grew in my faith just by my grandmother and my grandfather um and then when I was about 14 or 15 I actually had a personal advisor explain to me because I left church for a while but he explained to me um you left church yeah I left okay. church for a while you know because I, I started getting older and yeah I, I didn't like, want to hear it yeah, yeah I was like because yeah. uh, <laughs> grandmother you know she she didn't make you go like yeah, all mothers. day long, you know, <laughs> like, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You stay like five. And that it was a, um, a Baptist church. Oh, so I was like, man, yeah, man we here back. for like five, six hours, yep. three different services. It's just like, oh, my gosh. So, yeah, at the, uh, once I became, you know, like 13 or 14, I, you know, oh, you I got kinda, your wings in. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I became, you know, older, you know. So um, but at that time, um, I, I because I was I forgot what I was doing. I was 
working with some nonprofit in Chicago. I've always been, my mother has always made me give back, you know, whether it be, um, with, you know, not necessarily finances, but your time. Your yeah, time is all, your time is very important. Your your craft, I, I would go to the um, the courthouse and play for free, you know, in the, oh. the hallways. And they, they always had like a, a children's um, section or whatever the case mm -hmm. may be. Um, and I would play for them and whatever the case may be. So at this particular time, I was working with a nonprofit. And as I recall, I was dealing with like drug abuse mm -hmm. um, in inner city Chicago. And oh, um, the guy had quite an audience there. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, and the guy who was in charge of it, uh, Marley Hines, shout out to Marley Hines, he actually became my personal advisor. He taught me, he really taught me about the Holy Trinity. He really taught me about Genesis and how that ties into Revelation. He really wow, taught so me. he really, yeah. He taught me realistically. So God kept his hand on you. Realistically, he taught me more than what the church ever taught me. You know? Okay. And I mean, that's being real. And, uh, but like well, you I had said, time to mentor you and to really sit down and open up the word and to really, yeah. yeah. But I, I give credit to my grandmother and my grandfather putting me in church because once I learned the foundation of what Marty taught me, mm -hmm. everything else clicked right. and it made sense. And I was like, okay, I understand why this is. You know, I understand salvation. I understand mercy. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand these terms now and the significance of them mm -hmm. so yeah everything you know comes back around you learn things and you piece them together like a puzzle but i'm well, impressed that, like i said god had his hand on you he didn't let you get too far out you and know? the leader always talks about having that person that god put in your life to yeah. direct you to mentor you to develop you to uh, place the seed which your grandma did and then somebody who came and watered it mm -hmm. for yeah. this was your mentor because you did face some challenges growing up. Uh, you were being disciplined often. Let's talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think we spoke about this last time. I was like a, I wasn't a bad kid. I was just, you know, a kid going through whatever a kid was going through. Um, growing up, we had, my parents and uh, would argue a lot, you know. And, you know, you see that the house at the time, I recall, was just really toxic. Mm -hmm. You know, it was just intense, yeah. very intense. And you never wanted to really go home. And when you were home, people didn't like to really talk to each other and stuff. It was just that type of toxic. And my parents are awesome, but it was just in that situation, mm -hmm. everything, you know, things you just don't work too, out. Right? I remember. Yeah, yeah. I actually have um, two yeah. of my brothers with me right there now. Go, yeah. uh, Mario and Isaiah, they're my little big brothers. They're yeah, bigger they than me. They okay. both like sitting that. Well, standing at like six foot. <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, yeah, so I have two younger brothers. I have um, what well, I have three younger brothers. The other one is um, ten. He's actually at home right now. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, I have a sister. I have a couple sisters. That situation's kind of weird, you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, I, I have a I have a big family, mm -hmm. definitely. So, um, but yeah. you were talking about being disciplined often, and what was most effective for you was actually through essays and oral presentations, it actually addressed your negative behavior. Yeah, absolutely. My mom, she's really smart because um, she knew a lot of stuff didn't work for me. I wasn't really, I, I didn't really, you couldn't whoop me because I would run. Because <laughs> you were Michael fast. Jackson. I was very fast. Michael Jackson. I, I, would, I would run. Um, and when you did get me, it didn't really do anything. Mm -hmm. um, what do you mean? Because you were strong-willed? No, I mean, it's just like you whoop me. It's like, okay, it's just going to. I feel like at a certain age with kids, you're just going to, you're going to cause more damage mm -hmm. physically harming a child rather than trying to. And why would you want a child to fear you in that retrospect anyway? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? you know, I feel like more, the mind is more powerful than, you know, anything else. If you can really tap into the mind, you know, and really set an example via that way or expose a child to saying, okay, your, your, your actions are going to lead right here. Right. You know, let them see where that leads to. Like, my mother, she took me to the police station like twice or three times. Wow. She took me to jail. Wow. My mom, when I was younger. Yeah. Just Scared to show straight. me. Scared you know? straight. Good like, for you. Calm. Yeah, that's true. That's yeah, true. Oh, yeah. I never even thought about that. Right. That's my mom right. was straight so up scared straight. <laughs> 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 and see, she should have copyrighted that. There Trademarked you know. or something. She, she did that a long time ago. All right. She should have been getting some checks by now. <laughs> did it um, help? No, oh, yeah. Definitely it helped. Um, but then, too, I, I realized the, the number one thing that helped was when I wanted to change. And that's go, go. that goes back to the, the oral. You know, um, she found something that I was good at. Mm -hmm. So it was disciplinary, but it also exposed me to something that I had a talent for, which was writing, you know. And, um, yes, when I, when I got in trouble, as opposed to after a while whooping me and whatever the case may be, disciplining me in, in that regard, she would make me do something I hated at the time, which was write. I've never been good in, you know, 
school with English. I just never really liked you to do it and apply it myself, you wow. know. So she'll make me write these essays, and I have to present them in I front of my family. That. I remember you. Wow. <laughs> I would have to present them in front of my family, speak wow. it, you know, and let her know why I shouldn't be grounded. Let her know why and write an essay. It had to be like I remember, like probably five to ten pages long. Wow. Oh, wow. Write it out. I couldn't type it back then. You didn't have no <laughs> computer. Like my brothers got computers and stuff, but I had to write it out. <laughs> I remember like just so many wow. instances. That's great. It's funny, but it's not. Yeah, That's and it very it worked. Profound. And I found. But you had to think about what you're when you're writing something. You really have right. to own it. You really yeah. write it down, and then you yeah. you know because you're getting into it and you're really expressing yourself and then you know it was really relieving to me too because i had a lot of anger when i was younger mm -hmm. i was just really just mad mm -hmm. <laughs> a lot you know i was a happy kid and i usually i used to express that in school i love going to school not because of whatever the case may be and it's funny because i just realized this i told my mom this like i've never really liked school not saying that school is bad whatever no, but i personally sorry, have man. never liked school but I always liked school just because it always gave me an audience. <laughs> yeah, there you yeah. go. I love going to school, oh, making people laugh. Poor I teachers. love, I, right? I, I love oh, going to school, man. like uh, the work, or whatever. But getting getting in front of people and entertaining, making them laugh, you know, being a class clown. But you do like the community. You, I love you're that. A very good said, performer, yeah. but you. not just performer, entertainer. You know how to engage with the crowd every yeah, time I see you perform. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, so. Yeah, because anyway. you did talk about the most powerful method of self-expression for you was being a prolific writer, a writer, and then you even got into acting. Oh, Tell yeah. us a little bit about the acting. Yeah, um, my mom, like I said, my mom is, is she, very. Yeah, she laid the foundation now you for can my see life. How wise she is. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. That's yeah, we're why. nuts until you guys get on the other side. <laughs> I, I tell that all the time too, because I, I have students um, right now. I teach um, music lessons, Good and for you. I see these students, and I tell them like, "Man, you have an awesome mom." Because like yesterday, I was teaching the class and. Uh, the mom was like, okay, time for karate now. <laughs> and then yeah. after that, we have to this. And she was like, Julian, I swear, I, 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 I allow them to have one day a week to rest. But the other days, they have to stay busy. And Keep I told them, I'm like, man, your mom is laying a great foundation for you because I didn't know this, all the skills my mom gave me when I was younger yeah. until now. And I'm using them. I'm making money from them. And, you know, it's putting me in a good position. So, anyway. Um, yeah, so <laughs> my mom, she, when I was younger, writing, yeah. with the acting and the writing, um, she put me in uh, all type of classes, acting classes. I, I attended Barbizon, mod modeling, and oh, um, wow. acting school when I was younger. John Concablancas. I did wow. auditions. I did this. I did that. I did dance classes, which also led into the, me dancing for the I Chicago Bulls. That. Yes, yeah, I remember so that, yeah. I, I just stayed busy. And then when I was eight years old, um, but it all started with the piano. You know? And that's what I was going to go to. You yeah. started be taking piano lessons, and then after that, started taking vocals, dance, and which added to your arsenal. Oh, yeah, definitely. And that's what I'm saying. I'm, like, all over the place explaining it because I I, well, I just remember lot, being though. all over the place younger. But it, it all helped. Cause it well, was she all was channeling me. your energy, too. Cause you sound like you're very energetic. You have a lot, you know. Oh, thank you. It's the sugar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. I didn't want to say, but, you know. <laughs> no, no it, it, because, you know, it's, like, I really, like, I think we were talking about this too. And I'm sorry to be all over the place, That's but right, earlier we were talking about how I took a break from doing music. I intentionally did that. Like I didn't want to do any music. Why? Just because I wanted some time to really figure out and look at myself and say, what do I want for my life? Mm -hmm. Who do I want to be? What mm -hmm. type of man do I want to be? What type of person do I want to stand for? When I die, what do I want to leave behind? Like all of these important questions of life. Mm -hmm. What's my purpose? What God? What did God put me on the planet for? And I had to take that time out because you're doing so much sometimes where you're just in the in the moment right? and you don't really think about these things, the overall thing. So, uh, How long anyway, was this time that you took off? It was about four or five months. Okay. But that goes back to why you said energy. I'm excited. To I'm happy. Back, yeah, I'm right. excited to, like, mm -hmm. start doing this again because we did, like, a tour last year and everything, and it was so much going on. But, like, now it's just like, wow. I'm just excited to be here. So, so that's you why feel, I got energy. You feel now <laughs> like this is what you're supposed to be doing as opposed to maybe trying to please your mom and all these things. Now you feel like this is what God's called you to do. You found this is your niche? Absolutely. Yeah, because I know who I am as a person, at least for this time being right now in my life. I know who I am. Yeah. I know what I want to do. And I have a different motive in my life, you know. And like I said, I know myself now. I know what inspires me, what motivates me. 
and I'm using that. Mm -hmm. You know, because sometimes you, you can hear other people say, yeah, this is how I do it. And, and you, we try to imitate yeah. as opposed to really looking deep inside ourselves like, oh, wow, like, you know, well, who am I and what motivates me? Mm -hmm. And once I found that, I'm like, that's why every morning I wake up, like, I'm happy now. I'm motivated. I, I... You know, I could stay up for hours. I don't really have to sleep too That's long. That's why I see. I, I can see know. it here. Yeah, like, it's really good, though. But hey, well, what enjoy I wanted that. to talk about yeah. is, is some of your accolades because this is amazing. At 10 years old, you recorded your first song, and it was called Stay in School. Yeah, that was embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> at 11 years old, you started performing at the United Center for Bulls Kids, and for three years, you were part of the Bulls organization. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, that was dope. Um... I, like I said, I was I, at that time. I remember I was performing a lot. I started performing as far as for a piano and whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like I said, that just opens up more doors because you start meeting more people. Yeah. And at that time too, like I feel kind of old now, but it was like the internet <laughs> wasn't as popping. So the only way to really meet people were to go do shows and you know. It's whatever. true. So by yeah. doing these shows, you end up meeting people, and then you end up getting new opportunities. And I remember auditioning that first year. It was the mm -hmm. very first time they were trying to do something like that i was the original bulls kids um wow how interesting was that like yeah. halftime you guys would go out there well yeah sometimes it was doing um the regular quarters or timeout mm -hmm. uh sometimes it was doing i remember the first season it was really um selective because it was the first season so you know it'll be um probably like one game per month or two games per mm -hmm. month but it'll be like doing halftime timeout that's so cool then, then the second season the third season it became more popular so it became more and wow. more so it was it was really dope i mm -hmm. think about that all the time mm -hmm. the rehearsals yeah what were, an amazing experience yeah, to be there really. you know on the court during the seasonal games i mean just an amazing opportunity and being the originators yeah of the bulls kids yeah I, I remember too um i think the second or third season that's when the bulls started picking up steam because for a couple of years they weren't entering the playoffs after michael um jordan left, had left. and then so, rodman was with them too right cool dennis rodman was yeah yeah, yeah the, definitely yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, that was like in the 90s. Right. I came like the 2000s okay, where they, okay. I guess they were so, like. All right, so I'm dating myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, mean, I'm just saying, I remember it too. But, but it's no, like that, it. they went through, I believe, like a rebuilding stage. They but did. like come the second or third season, um, they start they start entering the playoffs. I remember, I think the third season, they enter the playoffs after so many years. And then we had the opportunity to do the playoffs. You're talking about like. Oh, that must have been exciting. Yeah, like, Are they still doing it? Yeah, yeah I believe so. They still yeah, have yeah they still have the Bulls kids. Wow. So Kim Tyler is the choreographer of the Lover Bulls. And uh, yeah, even that, it's just, just, you remember so many people who gave you so many opportunities. Yeah. Shout out to uh, Miss Miss Kim. She does the Lover Bulls, the Bulls kids. I believe at the one time she was doing the Matadors, the big guys who. Wow. Yeah, who dance. That's beautiful. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Well, it's interesting because that didn't stop there at 13 years old. Uh, your show at McDonald's. You oh, were yeah. at the Apollo Theater in Harlem. You what were three-time like? amateur yeah. night winner. Yeah. You got the title Super Top Dog title because you won three times oh, at yeah. the Apollo Theater. So again, opportunity after opportunity. What was that like? I hear uh, the Apollo. Oh yeah, it was steaming. It was, oh, it was really crazy. That must have been a lot of pressure because they didn't play. I understand, <laughs> man. They boo you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they did. See, luckily for me, I was a kid, so they weren't allowed to. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they did it to Lauren Hill. Oh yeah, they. But that's what I'm saying too. I mean, they. Yeah, but Lauren, she flew above it. But I don't know how old she was. She must not have been a little tiny. Maybe she was like 15 or 16. How old were you when you went? I was 13 or 15, I believe. Okay, well, hey, but she's sort of well, 14 tough. years old, you tape uh, as the only performer to entertain and support for the presidential candidate Barack Obama at the voters rally in Illinois. Wow, now yeah, that had that to be something What an opportunity. Yeah. That was the only performance. That was pretty dope. They gave me an entire hour set. What? I remember, too, I've always been, I hate this, but I've always procrastinated with shows, which is why, like, now it's completely different. I have a totally different You wait different to the last minute? Oh, yeah. It was, like, the oh, day before I pressure. finally got, the Are day before crazy? I got the, the band and everything. Oh. And I was like, yo, so we got an hour tomorrow, right? <laughs> <laughs> at this voters rally. We got, we got to get together. But luckily, oh. I, um, you knew how to really you knew how to really pull something together my <laughs> yeah. god that's crazy but see like my my piano teacher who's been my mentor since i was like 10 um they're all professional he owns a music school in chicago music net shout out to alan franklin yeah, it's all right. uh, <laughs> so i was dealing with professionals you know it, it, i've never really been whenever i got a band i'm never scared i'm never worried i'm never um, yeah, because like they can for so show. they fall, but you can fall back on them, right? Or what? Not even fall back. It's just it's more people. That's what I'm uh, saying. It's, yeah, it's, it's just when you more, got a team around you. Know, you it's like, <laughs> when, when you by yourself, it's like 
It's like you in the party by yourself That's dancing. Like, saying. when we got a team, it's like, yo, we it's, all good. We mess up. We all mess up. But if we you don't, go. we good. Like, you know? <laughs> and then you perform with professionals. That's so, really cool. Yeah, yeah amazing. But you're saying a lot of great stuff. It's true. Thank Four you. years later, you were in Washington, D.C., and you perform as a featured artist at the official inaugural ball. Yeah, that was that Obama. was Obama. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Same year, recorded your second song, True yeah. Dime. Um, you yeah. know, your turning uh, turning point was your My Girl remix video with Teen Sensation Group, Mindless Behavior, Sierra, Tyga, and Little Twist. Yeah, I was in that video. That was really dope. I got to see Sierra. Yeah, she was. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I was like, hey, Sierra, that? girl. Oh, yeah, beautiful. I was younger at that time. <laughs> wow. But now see, you I see you now, girl. <laughs> <laughs> 22. All right. she, she, I mean, Sierra, Russell look Wilson, out. you, good job. Yeah. All right. <laughs> yeah, so. But what's interesting is God gave you all these opportunities. Yeah, yeah where was your faith in all this? Exactly. Yeah. And, uh. and during this time, you see the success, which a lot of people out there listening and viewing probably go through. Yeah. How do you handle all that stardom, and especially at such a young age yeah, really. in such a short amount of time? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I had my faith, yeah. I had my family to depend on. I had a lot of support. But the funny thing is by I'm really excited now for my life because I did all of that with no true commitment to my craft. Mm. You mean it came really makes, easy because you were naturally talented? Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Yeah. I put no effort into it. When I was right. younger, I didn't know the because I had so many opportunities just coming to me, right? right? You, take like you, know, you, you take it for granted. You take it for granted. Yeah. And you know, looking back, that's I'm excited now because I'm like I don't even think about all this stuff until you mentioned it. Now. I'm just like, wow, I did it's do that. Lot. It's like it's really dope. Yeah. But you know, it, in my faith, I would say, you know, faith without adversity is just blah. Mm -hmm. oh, go ahead. You have no resistance to really test it. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to be nice to someone when they're nice to, to you. you. you exactly. Go. It's very difficult and challenging to be nice. And compose in a situation where it's so much being thrown at you. Mm -hmm. That's when you're really tested. And that's when you can really look at yourself and say, I, good, you know? Mm -hmm. Like I said, all of the things I did when I was younger, it's so easy it to, to talk you. about it because yeah. it's. I was very blessed. I was very fortunate. God put all the right components in my life. Mm -hmm. But once again, I had a lot of people to lean on. So, you know, going back to me taking time off and even within... I always say Chicago laid my foundation, but L.A. made me a man. Mm. It put me in situations that were, you know, the relationship situation. First time going through that. It put mm -hmm. me in times of trial and tribulation. It put me in times of, like, I don't know what to do. It put me on the edge. Well, were you with more com competition, with more... Uh... No, it was more so life. Okay. The competition is always within yourself. There I is no competition. That. You know what? That's beautiful. <laughs> is, is the competition is within myself. I'm not... Yeah, I, it's funny I've always learned when you're busy creating mm -hmm. you're not competing there you go when you're busy competing you're not creating there you go so I look at myself I'm a reflection of God who is the ultimate creator mm -hmm. I'm not looking at competition none of y'all like me I'm not like y'all and that's not that's not saying I'm inferior or superior say that again mm -hmm. say that but again but I'm uniquely me say that again you're not me I'm not you so why am I busy trying to be you there you go I'm not trying to I'm at peace yeah, with myself now beautiful. with my craft I'm more at peace I'm more comfortable yeah. saying what I want to say because you know if you don't approve of it if you don't like it so be it everyone won't approve of me they sure won't but I am uniquely who I am I can't I can't satisfy the six billion people on the planet. Mm -hmm. It's not my job mm -hmm. to. There's another person for that. Even if a job comes along, if there's mm -hmm. a performance, if I don't get it, it's not meant for me. But that's what I'm saying. It's more of a peace within myself. Mm -hmm. So once I found out who myself, who I am right now, more things happen authentically because I attract them. Mm -hmm. I'm not forcing them, you know? So now, like I said, and that was the period because... And like I said, my faith was obsolete only because I, I never really was challenged with it. It's so cool to go to church every week and my yeah, grandmother give right. me all these tubes. But then once I became older and I started really going through some stuff, I was able to see who I really was in times of adversity. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I didn't like that. I didn't like who I was, you know. And But that, that comes with being older and consistently molding yourself. Well, do you want to share some of the, I mean, without bringing other people in? Because music separate. So life brought yeah. adversity. Do you want to share some of... Uh, Talk about a challenge that you yeah. feel that maybe somebody out there listening or Could viewing can, can relate yeah. to, especially going, like, again, through such stardom at such a short time, 
being put in it and then having to take time off during the transition maybe yeah. or maybe a relationship what what is something that you can tell the listeners and viewers out there who are watching and tuning in that right. maybe can connect with you yeah because i think at 22 what and as handsome as you are <laughs> what you. kind of adversity can you have being young but that's not so oh yeah no definitely uh well you know home situations when you're facing three-day eviction notices every month okay you know when you're facing financial issues, when you're 17 year, years old, $125,000 in debt, not even from school. Wow. When you, you know, you leave school to go get a job because you have to pay those debts off and you're like, I put credits away from it. You can't even get to school because you can't afford it. You know, uh, mm. you know, you go through relationship issues where it's like you put yourself in situations where it's new, you know, and then, you, you know, you get into new avenues with relationships and you kind of lose your it's funny relationships allow you to find out who you truly are yeah so i agree they, with that you know but sometimes you're in toxic relationships you lose who you are because you're dependent too much on the other person you're not the relationship isn't interdependent it's dependent mm. right you see That's what i'm saying there you yeah, go. it's codependency it's mm -hmm. not good then you're going through things of you don't know who you truly are you don't know what you want to do in life mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. You just have all these issues going on. It's not not issues. It's just life, and you have to go through them. You said a lot. Yeah, you, you mean, and, and then that is a lot. Finding out who you you know drugs. You know, like I'm Did just you go there. Yeah, you, you went there. Yeah, it was like so. You came later in life, the drug experiment. Yeah, because when I was younger, like I said, I was always so disciplined, but I was sheltered too. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So. You know, you f you kind of figure out what's for you and what's not for you. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've I've been through a bunch of situations where it's just like, what the, you know what I mean? Like, what well, am I thank doing? you for being honest. But thank you for you being. Know? That's why we're having you up here today. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think a lot of people can relate to, you, especially our target demographic is a younger target demographic. Yeah. The you know that they're online, they're they're engaged, you know, via via iPhones, via mm -hmm. iPads, via you know Twitter, yeah. Instagram. When you're able to come out here and share some of your challenges, some of your struggles, they hopefully that you guys out there listening to me know that you're not alone. Yeah, we all go really. through these challenges of finances, yeah. of relationships, of identity, but yet Whatever you're here is. sharing mm -hmm. because yeah. of your faithfulness, because of your foundation, because of your discipline, right. you were able to sustain, yeah. go through those storms, and come out on the other side. Because after that, you got an appearance on the Christmas special on Victorious. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> you started your nonprofit organization. Right. Oh yeah. Well, I started my nonprofit when I was sixteen. Yeah, you did that. And yeah. let's talk about That's that really nonprofit. Right. Yeah, my nonprofit is um, entitled Keys to Life, and life is spelled L Y F E. It's an acronym standing for Loving You for Eternity because yeah, that's where everything starts with. And I'm from Chicago, where you see a lot of it's the murder capital of the oh, U.S. It, that's tearing my heart up. Oh, it is. And yeah. there's many factors to that that people can look at. But like I said, too, um, I feel like once you discover your purpose and you discover mm -hmm. the the positive nature or the possibilities of life. See, and that's why I was very spoiled when I was younger. I, I say not spoiled, but I was very blessed because I got to see things. I've been I was traveling by myself when I was 14, going to New York by myself all up in the different boroughs by myself when I was 14, 15, 16, That's living in Boston, living crazy. in L.A., you know. Uh, well, I was, was always... Your family? Hmm? Well, your, your family was supporting you to do this? And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And my father, you know, they, they trusted me. And mm -hmm. I, I, I was I was probably more mature at that age than I was like 19. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, you were more disciplined. Yeah, right? I was more disciplined at that uh, age. You didn't but, know. Yeah, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, you, you go through that. Uh-huh. But you, people don't like. I know a lot of people in Chicago, a lot of people in LA, a lot of kids. They don't get to see the possibilities, so they stay in their box and they stay within that lifestyle mm -hmm. that they are accustomed to seeing. And that's why it's like I get compliments all the time about, "Well, Julian, you're so this, you're so that too." That's because it's multiple people that made me who I was, who right. contributed to at and least who I am. And you were to get out when you said something. That I think a lot of people want to get out, but they're afraid to do it, so they feel trapped. Yeah. And that's and that goes back to the nonprofit. You know? yeah. The nonprofit is geared towards teaching the youth to love themselves and find themselves because once you have that, you have the confidence to change your world. The world around you is simply in your mind. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's in your mind. Everything is in the mind. Once you grab a hold of your mind, that's why sometimes drugs it's cool to party. I'm not I'm not promoting drugs. I'm just saying with alcohol and stuff, anything that distorts your mind, relationships, mm -hmm. the negativity of another mm -hmm. person, that filter, that it distorts your mind. And what happens is it makes your your internal, your external is a reflection of your internal. If you are disorganized or you're That's not true. stable internally, your external 
uh, reflects that, yes, right? Yeah, you're right. You know, so that's why sometimes it's cool to party. Everybody want to party. You know, I'm, I'm Mr. LOTP, Mr. Life of the Party. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, you know, at some point you have to take control of your mind. And when you take control of your mind, you can take control of your life. And then with that same extent, you inspire others to do the same. So well, we When now was that pivotal moment for you? When was that... All the stuff I'm speaking that comes at different times of my okay. life. I don't know, it, but this okay. is that's where I stand right now. When did the partying stop? Did you one day say, "Okay, look, I want to"? Oh no, I still party right now, but I, but I party with meaning, with... and I party. I'm 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 more balanced You're with my celebrating life. life, maybe instead of yeah, because I mean yeah. you you have to. I have fun, but I make sure my work gets done too, mm-hmm. and my work is not really work because I enjoy what I do. Mm-hmm. You know, so yeah, because yeah, it's interesting because you started this nonprofit mentoring. Developing self pride, right. accountability, creating How does that a dialogue. Look? What do you do? You go to, you go out in the community. You have classes, the teaching of music. How is how is that? How do you do it? Yeah, originally when we founded it in Chicago, um, we partnered up with the Boys and Girls Club of Fort Heights, mm-hmm. and we good. had a hub there. And then also where I'm from in the south suburbs of Chicago, we went to a bunch of schools. Um, and taught, you know, and just saw because I would at this time I was doing a lot, you know, and. A lot of people knew me, mm-hmm. so it was helpful for me to go back and just say, "Hey, you know, this is what I'm doing," and blah blah blah. And uh, yeah, you have initiatives and you have this, and mm-hmm. yeah, we're gonna come every Friday and we're gonna do this event, or every month we're gonna have this and we're gonna give back. I'm gonna bring in people I know and you know talk to you all, and then we're gonna have you know workstations or whatever the case may be. It's wherever that particular initiative is. I know the very first thing that we did was um, a campaign start um, um, called. Um, change starts with me or something like that change mm-hmm. starts with me and it was more so you know getting to know the kids and saying exactly well what are you good at mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know everybody's good at something right take that run with it run you with know it. <laughs> because a lot of times too like i said we compare too much we compare well you're good at this and i want that so i'm gonna do what you do but that's probably not for you and mm-hmm. everyone has something unique and when you embrace that you get to shine your light yeah you, you do you get to shine your light why do, and this is what <laughs> cuz i i'm not i don't call i don't call myself a college dropout because i'm not i'm still going to finish my degree but i left college because i felt like i had other things to do in my life at that time mm-hmm. so um but anyway my last teacher i had i was taking english and he told me he was like look why are you here mm-hmm. If you're not really gonna commit to it, if you don't really want to do it, yeah, why wasting are you here? Time. Why are you're you wasting, wasting your time? Time? Mm-hmm. time is the only thing we have. Money can always be made. You know, I, I can lose it that. today. I could go make some more tomorrow. Whatever the case may be, time is the most valuable thing because we don't know how much of it we have. That's right. And we can't make any more. That's right. So he was like, "Why are you here? If you if you know that this isn't naturally you and you're good at something, why won't you go do what you?" And it spoke to me. I'm like, "You're right." I'm I'm not coming back here until I go find out what I need to do because mm-hmm. I'm not happy. I don't want. When I first started college, I was happy. And then after a while, I was just like, I think it was just the excitement of starting it, you know. Right, but yeah. after a while, I'm like, I'm like miserable. Like I don't want to be here. Well, you finding your passion has continued. Like you said, you took a small break. You came back to it because right. now you have your new album, College Tales. Yes. Heartbreak, and when we come back, you're gonna do a live performance. Yeah, and one of the, do you still have the nonprofit? Yes, I do. Is we, it um, here too? Well, we're transitioning it out okay. here since I'm predominantly out here now. Okay, yeah. very good. All right. Well, Just ladies and gentlemen, up. this is Joy in my house. I want you to stay yes. tuned. When we come back. We're gonna have Julian Keys perform off his I new album, wait. College Tales. You're not gonna want to miss. This is Joy in my house. I want you to stay tuned. Yay. We're gonna come right back. Hey, hey, shout us out. What's the count? I'm your host. I am WDC. Tune in to WDC Radio on LA Talk Live every Saturday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time for sickle cell trade awareness, lupus, bullying, mental health, and all different aspects of life. So tune in to WDC Radio right here on LA Talk Live. Also, you can listen to us on iTunes, Live 365, YouTube, and Ustream. And don't forget Apple TV and Roku right here on LA Talk Live where we're more than just talk. Shout us out. What's the count? Welcome back. 
Welcome, this is Greg, inviting you to tune in Saturday, 6 p.m. to the Mystic Ballroom. All vinyl most of the time, and we'll cover psychedelic, soul, garage, and much, much more. Myself and the Young Mogul will bring you this every Saturday at 6 p.m. exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B, Live 365 Radio, Flag TuneIn Radio, AHA Radio, TV Radio, and Apple TV Radio. Or you can watch and listen directly at LATalkLive.com. Reality, radio, handcrafted for yours and mine, listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hello, I'm Joel Ramirez. And I'm Lolita Robinson Coppage, and welcome to Joy in My House on LATalkLive.com. Inspirational radio with a touch of recovery. A reality show where nothing is left unsaid and no one is insignificant who says it. Exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio RB or watch us on Ustream TV. Reality radio handcrafted for your listening pleasure. This is LA Talk Live and we are more than just talk. Hi, this is TJ, inviting you to join us every Sunday at 2 p.m. for Veterans Day Live. Join us as we provide info that would help all military personnel. So don't forget to tune in to Veterans Day Live every Sunday at 2 p.m. That's every Sunday at 2 p.m. Exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio R&B, Radio Flag, TuneIn Radio, Live 365, AHA Radio, TiVo Radio, and Apple TV Radio, or just watch and listen directly at LATalkLive.com. Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just talk. Hey, this is Trisha Mann Grant, and I am inviting you to join us every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for Gospel Rhythms Heaven's Party here on Earth. And join us as we talk to the Christians, just not any Christian, but all Christians of entertainment and all walks of life. Don't forget to tune in to Gospel Rhythms Heaven's Party here on Earth every Sunday, 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, exclusively on LATalkLive.com. You can also catch us on iTunes Radio, RNB, Live 365, Radio Flag, Tune In Radio, AHA Radio, TiVo Radio, and Apple TV Radio. Or watch and listen directly at LATalkLive.com. Reality Radio, handcrafted for your listening and viewing pleasure. This is LA Talk Live, and we are more than just Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Joy in My House, inspirational reality show with a touch of recovery, a reality show where nothing is left unsaid. And no one's insignificant who shares. I'm joined here by author of Shape by the Master's Hand, Alita Robinson, and my co-host, and our in-studio guest, Julian Keys, with his partner, Brian. They're going to perform off their new album, College Tales, Heartbreak. Here we go. Take it away. Stay through some bull, but she won't stay forever. Oh no, a woman's heart is priceless. Like a jewel, she give you a heart till you break it all apart. She ain't never forget the pain you cause. Confusing, so clueless. You play too many games, and right now, bro, you're losing. Them excuses, can't you see she's hurting? Her mama said you ain't worth it, but her heart says he's worth it. He could change his ways one day, cause she believes he can be, he can do no wrong. It's him and me. A woman's love, a woman's trust, 
A woman's love, oh, a woman's love. A woman's heart, a woman's love. A woman's love, oh, a woman's love. You see that girl she loves, but I don't lose her trust. Cause when you lose her trust, she's falling out of love. Oh, a woman's love. Oh, woman's love So you thought it was cool to have a sideline My you main chick in the game doing overtime Overtime, she doing overtime And you won't even give her time Damn you cold, yeah You see you digging your own grave Hear these words and watch why I say There'll come a day when she gonna look at you sideways And she can't stand your ass no more Boy, you're so clueless so foolish, you play too many games and right now, bro, you're losing. Uh, them excuses, can't you see she's hurting? Her mama said you ain't worth it. Trust me, I know no one's perfect, but you can change your ways one day. Cause she believes you could be, you gotta show her something though. Cause she'll leave. See, a woman's love, a woman's trust, a woman's love, oh, a woman's love, a woman's heart. A woman's love, a woman's love, oh, a woman's love. You see that guy she loves, but don't lose her trust. Cause when you lose her trust, she's falling out of love. Oh, a woman's love, oh, a woman's love. I'm calling out. Sorry for all the pain, all the pain I caused you, baby. Hey, yeah, I cry at night. Ooh, wow. Ladies and gentlemen, Julian Keys, A Woman's Love, off his new <laughs> album, College Tales Heartbreak <laughs> with Brian. Well, I gotta ask Don't you, Julian. Don't you dare laugh, cause you had me sold there now. Yeah. Oh, right, right okay. now, it's, it's cool. Wow, well, that that we was gotta ask a little technical difficulty at the end, right there. <laughs> <laughs> a little emotion, you mean? A little yeah, emotion. that's the thing. Yeah, well, wow. Julian, tell us about the album. Tell us about that song, "Woman's Love." You got emotional. Tell uh, us. Oh okay. uh, yeah. So okay, so the College Tales project in its entirety is um, a trilogy. Which I'll be releasing the second installment uh, within the next two months. Yeah. But this one, I wanted the EP because you know EPs are usually half a length of an album. I didn't want to give an album away. I wanted to do you know a teaser basically. Yeah. But within the teasers, I wanted them to be um, theme based. So this first one is actually um, heartbreak, you know. And this is it. It it was inspired when I broke up when I when I there got out know. of a relationship <laughs> and etc. Like Boy. that too. Um, yeah. But like I said, this is, you know, College Tales is about stories of, you know, what's going on in college and wherever the case may be. So all of the songs are actually connected. The very intro of the, the EP is basically I'm getting phone calls because I was unfaithful to my girl, you know. Wow. And I'm getting phone calls in the morning from the girl who, you know, I, 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 yeah, I was cheating with. And I got another voicemail from my girl because she found out. I was cheating and I got a call from my homeboy like yo call me back so the he got the call too yeah <laughs> <laughs> so the very first Brian Brian smiling man, over there Brian he's like <laughs> me <laughs> man she's <laughs> laughing <laughs> me <laughs> so funny but it's not the very first song yeah track number two is entitled girls and this that song um tells about what happened how I cheated you know how the temptation basically it shows temptation and it also shows one side of a woman because I've, de I've dealt with plenty of women before and there's two types that I've dealt with there you have the promiscuous type okay. and then you have the ones you know, that tempt you away from the relationship no then you have you know like a, a woman like I just explained a woman's love you know that so the first song talks about the promiscuous girl how she lured me into this temptation how I was tempted and etc and I went along with that and I was you know basically weak in my you know whatever mm -hmm. and then this song is basically the reflect a woman's love is like the reflection period because guys are done we do stupid stuff and um we don't really know this what we've done until time has passed oh, right. wow. That's and this well said thank you you're helping me <laughs> <laughs> no <I'm> serious <laughs> and, and you so know you do you do realize you hurt right yeah okay. and a woman's love is basically me saying like it's a reflection period like man you know time has passed you know i want to do all this irrelevant stuff you know investing in these promiscuous relationships and wherever and i had something good and now i'm looking back like man 
that's a woman's love. She was it always um, goes back to Proverbs thirty one ten, where it describes the perfect woman with the type of woman every man needs. And I'm like, wow, I had this, and my temptation lured me away from that. And then now, it's too late. You know, wow. it's too late. And then the third song actually goes into a song called um, "Copies," where it's like now. I'm trying to get that back, but since I since I can't have the original thing, I'm finding all these other girls that remind me of my ex. Oh, that is wow. so beautiful. And then that's how wow. the e- entire EP ties up for yeah. that, and that's a heartbreak. That well, tell us wonderful. about I'm where serious. people can go to find more information. Yeah. Your website is juliankeys.com. Yes, your sir. Facebook is Facebook backslash Julian Keys Thomas. Yes. You have your Twitter page, Julian Keys, Instagram, Julian Keys. But let's say they want to buy the album. Let's say they want to buy the EP. Tell us where we can go. It's all across the web. I mean, even if you want to just stream it, it's on Tidal, it's on Spotify. If you want to purchase it, it's on iTunes, it's on Google Play, it's on Amazon, it's everywhere. It's on Xbox Music, PlayStation Music, everywhere. Are they all done, the trilogy? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that project okay, is out. So it's already done. Yeah, that project oh, is done. Well, I mean, that beautiful. the trilogy is like, that's the first installment. That was the first project. Okay, I'm doing another EP, now you're doing and that. then I'm going to do another EP. And then the entirety of the project, the actual album... Or, you know, wherever the, the entirety of that project, the full length project, will be out the second half of this year. Oh. And to complement that, we're doing many things such as short films and that actually complement each story, you know, hey, short films and a tour. Thank I'm you. Laughing, but it's not funny. I think that's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. So young, remember that because it's going to be even more coming, you know, as you get older. Especially in the direction you're going. Yeah. You're going yeah. into that platform Beautiful. where you're going to be tempted a lot more, but great yeah. for you to be able to put on wax and, and really speak your heart because you did get choked up at the end a little bit there. And so. Brian had a nice feel to it. He, you know, thank yeah. you for coming and sharing with him. Well, we got to yeah. ask you, Julian, the name of the show is called Joy in My House. The premise is a joy that we have in the midst of our challenges, successes, grace. What does Joy in My House mean to you in today's day and age? Um, house, as in your temple, and joy as in you control what goes on in your house you know joy in your house is you control that you control what mentally happens you control if you know aver- a- um, adversity comes trials and tribulations come you're completely in control of how you respond to it and um yeah and as long as you have joy within yourself that's joy in my house you know amen amen Very yeah. well. julian keys ladies and gentlemen yeah. enjoy my you, house you, with you. brian he sang off his new and ep his lovely brothers who came that's and gave right, him support. And his brothers. yeah shout out to my my big <laughs> little brothers <laughs> this is joy my house i want you to catch us live every sunday here at noon with life changing stories of, inf- of hope and inspiration and talent that will inspire you next week we have the representative of project cuddles hosted by john stamos promoting dinner by the bay you're not going to want to miss this is joy in my house i want you guys to have a blessed day thank you lolita robinson my Thank co-host you. Had a good Ben time. Eric our hey, producer man. and our in-studio guest Julian Keys and Brian awesome. you, you know guys have a blessed day you know what you should call the show next week what Joy in My Fool House oh, oh. <laughs> you heard it here John I'll get in touch with you you guys have a blessed day there you go <laughs> he's not coming where did the sweetness go Lord have I fallen from